This YouTube clip follows on from one I did about a particular story called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. If you have done that, and you followed that one, then this one follows on from The Very Hungry Caterpillar because we're going to be talking about change and about things that change because of God's love. In The Very Hungry Caterpillar, we saw the caterpillar change from that to that. And we talked a little bit about how a butterfly is a symbol of resurrection. We talk about Jesus' resurrection, the butterfly being a symbol of that, a marker of that. And today we're going to be looking at change again and how people are changed in the Bible and how people are changed by God's love. So in a moment I'm going to tell you a story about a lion who loved. But first of all, we're going to look at something quite different and how that might change. So I hope that you can find in your house or in school some dirty coins. So you can see there I've got some dirty coins and we're going to think about how they might be made clean. So I'm going to do this two different ways. So we've got two bowls and in one bowl I'm going to put water, just plain water, and some bicarbonate of soda, which we usually use when we're cooking, but it's good for cleaning too. I'm going to put that into the water. And then the other one, I'm going to put some vinegar. And some salt. And the last one here, salt that we use also use in cooking. So I've got a bowl here with vinegar and salt. I've got a bowl here with water and bicarbonate of soda. And into each one, I'm going to put some coins that have been in my purse and are quite grubby. So they look like this at the moment. And if you can do this as well, you can put them in, swizzle them around a bit and just leave them to one side while we talk a bit about how in the Bible have been changed by God's love. If you were with me during Holy Week, you will remember this part of our Easter story. In the Easter story, Simon Peter goes, follows Jesus with the donkey that carries Jesus, first of all on Palm Sunday and then carries Jesus' body to the grave. When things got really scary in Jerusalem, Simon Peter, who's here, and the donkey who's here, are watching Jesus being taken to court and being tried, being getting into a lot of trouble with the people who have the power. And Simon Peter doesn't follow him right inside the room. He stays outside. And then it gets even worse for Jesus, and Jesus ends up in a big place, big frightening place with soldiers, and again, the donkey stays slightly to one side and Simon Peter, Peter, stays away completely. What happens is Jesus is arrested and is told that he's going to be killed and all his friends disappear. And Simon Peter, who is the Peter that our church in Cholden is named after, that Saint Peter, gets really scared. And I would have been scared. I think you would have been scared. So when people ask Peter, do you know Jesus? He says, no. And Jesus has told Peter that he will say no one, two, three times. And Peter does. He says, I don't know Jesus. Somebody else asks him. He says, I don't know Jesus. Somebody else asks him. He says, I don't know Jesus. He was really scared of being arrested himself and killed himself. So he goes away and hides. And now we're after Easter. Jesus is risen and Jesus has started being with the disciples again. And when he meets Simon Peter, he says to him, Simon Peter, do you love me? And Simon Peter says, of course I love you. Simon Peter, do you love me? And, Jesus, and Simon Peter says, you know I love you, Lord. Third time. 
Simon Peter, do you love me, says Jesus. Yes, I love you, Lord. Three times he said he didn't know him. Three times he says, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then Simon Peter realises he's been forgiven. He feels better because he's really told Jesus how much he loves him. He's found a way of saying sorry. He's changed so much by this that our church is named after him. He's a saint and he's the saint that the whole church in the whole world is built on. Jesus referred to Peter as his rock. He said, you are the rock, the rock I'm going to build my church on. You're strong, you're tough, you're going to be a really good foundation for my church. That's St. Peter. And St. Peter was scared and frightened and ran away and said he didn't know Jesus. And Jesus still loved him and God still loved him. And that experience meant that Peter went on be the most amazing saint and to build communities to get to know people and tell everybody the story of God's love. Now what about that lion? There we go. This is a story about the lion who wanted to love. It's a very different story because this lion doesn't behave like normal lions. I'm going to read it, then show the picture. It rhymes. Deep in the African heartland, way out on the hot sunny plains, there lived a small lion who didn't fit in. And Leo was this lion's name. Leo. Now lions are usually fierce and lions are meant to be strong. But Leo just wanted to love everybody and play with his friends all day long. You worry me, Leo, my darling, his mum started saying one day. You'll never survive in the animal world if you don't learn to hunt for your prey. But mummy, said Leo bewildered, I don't think I quite understand. I'm sure there are plenty of lions that hunt who could kill all the beasts in the land. And besides, when I'm close to a zebra, a funny thing goes through my head. Instead of deciding to bite through his skin, I'd much rather hug him instead. I have spoken, said Leo's mum sternly. It's up to you now to decide. But if you insist you're not going to hunt, then there's no place for you in our pride. Poor Leo crept off to the jungle, but hoped that with love in his heart, he'd learn how to cope in the animal world, though he didn't know quite how to start. That evening while Leo was sleeping, he woke to the thunder of hooves, and when he looked up from his lair, he could see a whole antelope herd on the move. Some leopards were running beside them, surrounded by thick clouds of dust. Leo thought quickly. He jumped to his feet. I must help them, he said. Yes, I must. Then he caught sight of two injured young ones who couldn't keep up with the bunch. If he didn't help them to try to escape, the leopards would eat them for lunch. Leo led them away back to safety and gave them some food they could eat. He licked their wounds clean till they became strong and he nursed them back onto their feet. The antelope babies kissed Leo and told him we'll never forget that you saved our lives when we thought we were dead. You're the loveliest lion we've met. Leo was very excited. His face had lit up in a smile. It's fun making friends in the jungle, he thought. Then he lay down and slept for a while.
From that day on, Leo decided to run to each squeal and each cry. He led little hippos to watering holes and he taught baby birds how to fly. He helped a giraffe who'd been injured and a vulture who'd broken his wing. And he, even though all of his friends gave him food, he never once asked for a thing. Then one day, beside a wide river, Leo heard a small animal scream. He ran to the banks and caught sight of a cheetah being swept quickly, very quickly downstream. Please help! cried the cheetah in panic. I haven't yet learned how to swim. The waterfall's going to drown me, I'm sure. With a splash, Leo boldly leapt in. He managed to rescue the cheetah and push him quite safe to the side. But as he was trying to scramble ashore, Leo slipped and got caught in the tide. The river was crashing and foaming, and Leo let out a loud yelp. The waterfall wasn't too far away now, so the cheetah rushed off to find help. The friends Leo had in the jungle all raced to the bank straight away. They wanted so much to show Leo their thanks. At last they had found a new way. And they all go, running to help. They climbed on the rocks through the rapids and linked themselves up, tail and a paw. An elephant wrapped his long trunk round a tree, which anchored them safe to the shore. And when Leo got to the rapids, a lioness dipped down her head. She lifted him gently across to the bank. You're safe, Leo darling, she said. My son, you're a brave little lion, she spoke in her humblest tone. I was wrong. Now I see love can bring us together. Please, Leo, she said, come back home. You've got to be strong to be different. And when you've got love on your side, you've got the most valuable gift that there is. We want you <coughs> as king of our pride. So love can change us. And we've been talking about change. We've talked about the caterpillar changing into the butterfly. We've talk, talked about Peter changing from somebody who ran away to somebody who was brave and strong like a rock. And we've also tried putting those coins into two different substances. Now I'm imagining that that water in there is like the love that surrounds us and makes things better for us. Let's see what it's done for those pennies. Well, one has worked a lot better than the other. This one's been in the vinegar and the salt. This one's been in the bicarbonate and the water. Now this one is cleaner than it was, but this one is really shiny. I don't know if you can see it again. There we are, really shiny. So we've changed our coins by surrounding them with salt and vinegar. If we surround ourselves with love and the people we know with love, we'll make a big difference in their lives. And God's love makes a big difference in all our lives. So let's end with a prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for stories, for the stories that teach us about your love. We give thanks for the story of Leo the lion. We give thanks for the story of Peter. And we give thanks that you sent Jesus to show us how to show our love in the world so that we can take into the world 
all the love that God gives us. May we know that we are surrounded by a love that can change us. And can we show that to the world when we go into all the situations that we find ourselves in, in school, at home, when we go walking? So we thank you, God of life and love, for the life and love that you give to us. Amen. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll be exploring this a little bit more. And tomorrow I don't think you need to bring anything, just yourself. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.